All right, so we're finally getting down to the end of our project and it's time to do some paint. And I'm using a uh, base coat, clear coat. So pretty easy to paint. Painted a few things along the way, but by no means am I an expert. So experts watching this video, just cringe along and hold your breath because some of this I'm probably not doing by the book. But each part is a little bit different. You know, we got the fender and we got the uh, seat sub, the tank and the cowl. And so we'll look at each one of those at things that we got to do to prep for the paint. Because the one thing I do know is prep is the key. Uh, painting is easy. It only takes just a little bit of time to paint it, but it takes a lot of time to prep and get it right. So we'll look at each one of these and kind of see what I got to do. And then I'll go through and I'll do them. And uh, then hopefully we'll be ready to do some paint. All right, so for the fender, this was actually off of Virago. I cut it down and made it shorter. So you can see my welding there where I welded across. So I did pretty good on my welding, got everything smooth. Uh, but I'm a little pity on my welds in some spots. So probably not enough that I couldn't build up with some uh, build primer and then sand it off flush going about it. But I'm a little lazy, so I'm going to use a body filler, fill that in, then we'll sand it all down. But one thing I already sanded on this, and one thing I do know is if you have any kind of, of different area, different levels, they have to all be feathered out like this. If you have like a fast transition, like right there, you can see those little dots. Those little dots are going to show up if I don't feather those on out. So got a little more feathering to do. I don't necessarily going to take it all the way down to the metal because I don't think it's necessary. It's just got to be kind of smooth, and this is some pretty good paint. So that one's not too bad, just a little bit of body filler and a little more sanding and we'll be done with that one. Then I'll paint the bottom side black with a nap. All right, for my fender kind of thing that goes underneath my seat, this is made out of a piece of car hood off an old Dodge Ram that I had years ago. I took the hood off of them, had the hood laying around. So I cut some sides off of the hood, maybe a, a nice little uh, seat pan. But this one is all chipped up where I bent it. And so all of this paint's got to come off. So for this one, the paint's so chipped up and marked up and, and uh, got creases, I'm going to have to take this all the way down to the bare metal. So right here you can see where I did a little bit of sanding uh, just to kind of see using one of these uh, poly wheels. does pretty good about taking the paint off and it doesn't get in the metal. And so that one we're going to have to sand down completely to the metal and then I'll prime that and then we'll be good to go on it. This, All this down the middle is going to be under the seat so I might put a little body filler on just where I'm going to see smooth some of that out a little bit but that'll look pretty good then we'll be able to paint it. So now let's move on over to the gas tank. Alright so for the gas tank it's got some thick paint on it and uh, I'm assuming that that must be factory paint. I don't know. never saw a yellow kind of cream colored Virago, but this has got some really thick paint. But you can see there's some chips in it. There's no dents, so I don't have to worry about any dents to fill. And I don't really want to take all this paint off. So probably what I'm going to do is take all these lines down level, level out anywhere. And then like that spot right there, that's actually chipped out deep. I'm going to put a little body filler in there. And then we're going to use the level of this paint because this is some pretty good paint and, uh, build back up to it. I just got to sand down all this stuff. So I'm not going to bare metal on this one. And of course on the inside, we'll do it black. So for that one, it's just going to get a little bit of body fill, smooth things out, sand it all down. It won't be too bad either. All right. So last on the list is the cowl. And if you're looking real close, you say, Hey, that looks a lot like uh, maybe a motorcycle helmet. Well, that's what it is. So this is made out of plastic, so I gotta be real careful what I'm sanding. And it also has like a clear coat on top of it as well as the graphics, but the graphics are just printed. So there's not levels of graphics. So I just gotta sand on this one real carefully. Let's get set up and uh, see if we can do us some sanding in uh, high speed and also some body filling. So we'll get set up here and see what we can do. We'll start with the fender and uh, finish on out. All right, so for the fender, all we got left is just a little bit right here where we had some dots. And so I just want to feather those layers out. All right, so next up is the seat pan. 
And we're gonna take this one all the way down to the bare metal. All right, so now we got that one done. So now we can move on over to the tank and let's see if we can get the tank prepped up a little bit. All right, so for the tank, we got this one gouge right here. We're gonna grind the paint off so I can body fill it. And then I'm gonna go run around this edge and get rid of some of this. So just in case you were wondering if I could leave that line and it would paint, and I just went ahead and put a little bit of black on it. And so this is actually still wet, you can see, it's sticky. But it's shiny, and so you can see that back here, I just painted across, and so you can't see that line anymore. You can see that divot right there that I chomped out and I have to refill but as far as seeing that line you can't see that line anymore because it's flat basically I sanded the clear down and so there's no more line so there we go so you don't have to take the line off you just got to make sure that you get it perfectly flat all right so last on the list is the cap I get to sit down for this one All right, so it's time to put a little bit of body filler on our welds. And so what we first do, we gotta squish this stuff and get it all squishy. So I've already squished it some, and it's called cream hardener. It needs to have the consistency of like lotion. If you open the lid up and it's like liquidy, you better close it back up and squeeze some more because it's not mixed and it's gonna make a mess. So. We got those, and then what I always use is just some pieces of uh, flashing. And so, we got one piece that's gonna be my mixer, little table for mixing. And then, what I'll do is use some of these little pieces, and they need to be wider than the area that you're doing, because this is what I'm gonna apply it with. So I got me some little pieces, and I got me something to mix on and I got me some sticks so all we need to do is get us a little bit of the get a little bit of the resin and you got to work quick on this stuff so don't use a bunch just mix up what you think you need so maybe I need that much it stinks too and so then all I'm gonna do is check and make sure I'm not liquidy so not too bad. So then we want to put a little bit of hardener in there. If you get too much, it's going to harden up quick. Too little, and it won't harden up at all. So now, all we got to do is mix it. And so for my applicator, I'm going to kind of bend it to the angle, and then that way the corners touch and it leaves it up in the middle. So that'll be my applicator. And then I'm going to use this one as my mixer. So all you got to do is just start mixing and get it to where it's all pink looking. All right, now we're going to take our applicator and scoop up some. And all we're going to do is apply it on it and try to get it as smooth as possible because we're going to be sanding it all back out there. And you can see 
I waited that long and it's hardened up. So when it gets to the point that it's chunky like that, just get it off there because it's not gonna feel right. And all it's gonna do is make you work. So in about that amount of time, the stuff becomes unusable and you gotta get it out there. So we'll mix up another little batch so you can see you don't mix up a lot. Up. It's already starting to harden up, but we got it. So now we're done with that piece. All right, so now we want to switch out for the tank and do that very same thing. All right, so there we go. We'll let that harden up. And that was the only two you can see it's already like to the point that it's hardened up so we'll let that sit on there and then we'll sand those down i'll give it a couple of hours all right so last on the list is the seat bottom and the seat's going to cover up all of this so i'm just worried about this little area and then right over here where i had to weld it together so we'll get those and that and we should be in pretty good shape on the seat bottom so And there we go. So now we got our Bondo on. And we can let these sit around and they'll cure out for a little bit. The next stop is sand that down. Sand all these and then do our final sand and we're ready for primer. sanding and then we can do our prime cut. All right, so it's time to do our finished sanding. Look for any imperfections that we might have, so we're just going to run across it with some scotch bright. sanded and we're ready to set up our paint booth. All right, so our paint booth is set up and we are ready to prime. First thing we want to do for prime is wipe it down with alcohol. And there we go. Everybody's all primed up. So we'll let that sit and cure, and we'll be ready for a paint. All right, time for our final sanding. And so we just want to go over it with a little bit of scotch bright. We are 
sand it up. And then all we're gonna do is alcohol it down. And we'll start mixing some paint. All right, there we go. Now we're ready to start mixing up some paint. All right, so doing the paint is not so difficult. You just gotta have a few tools. So I got me a cheap gun from the cheap store, but you gotta have a dryer on your uh, air compressor and you also need a dryer filter and then a regulator and then the gun. And then what I do is attach a little headlight to it, one of those things that goes on your forehead, and uh, then I can turn it on. And what it'll help me do is make sure I stay within the wet line as I'm spraying. So that's kind of critical. But to set one of these up, it varies a lot by how thick your paint is. But that regulator, I usually put it about 40 with nothing going. And then when I shoot, it drops down. And so I set that about on 25, somewhere around in there. But I'm gonna have to adjust the pattern of what I'm gonna spray. So when you're spraying with these cheap guns, what you wanna do is end up with a pattern that kinda looks like this, about that big. So somewhere around, you know, four inches, five inches on the spray pattern. And then you're also looking to make sure you don't have really big spits coming out. So you kind of have to play with your air a little bit, adjust the how much air volume is spraying, and then how much paint, and then how much back pressure of the air is going through to push the paint. So you can play around a little bit, but the end result should be a spray pattern that is just a bunch of tiny little dots. I get a lot of overspray because I push a lot of paint out because these, these guns tend to make speckles. And so you have to really push some air through there. So. That's how you end up setting it up, so you have to experiment. You'll see me, when I start to spray, I'm actually gonna experiment on the sides of my plastic just to make sure I get my spray pattern pretty close before I start spraying. The other thing is I use a one gun for color and then I use a gun for clear. That way I don't have to clean that gun and go into the clear. I can just put some reducer in it, let it sit, and then immediately go do the clear. So this gun, the chrome gun from the cheap store is a better gun. It sprays clear a lot better than the, the uh, cheap, cheap, cheap ones. This one's not expensive either, but they're easy to set up. So let's get our paint set up. And what I always do, these filters are important because I'm shooting metallic and I want to make sure that uh, I filter out any big stuff, but I let the metallic go through. And so you got to get a filter. So I always set it on top of my gun to remind me that when I pour it in the gun, I run it through that filter because I don't have a filter down in the gun. The little filters come out for the metallic or else it just grabs them and stops everything up. So if we're looking at our paint. Paint tells you on the side what to do. So this paint says we're going to mix 16 of the color and we're going to mix one of the hardener and we're going to mix eight of the full base reducer okay so i think i can probably paint what i got to paint over there with about i'd say somewhere around maybe 200 milliliters 200 milliliters of paint Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is actually cheat a little bit. You can use this little cup, but it's not very accurate and it definitely doesn't go down low enough for this small paint job when you're doing the uh, hardener. And so what I'm gonna do is actually make me a cup as a guy. And so at 200 milliliters of this, that means 16 to eight, I'm gonna put 100 milliliters of the reducer and then the hardener you'd have to calculate. So. Since it's a 16 to 1, 200 divided by 16 is going to be 12 and a half ounces, or sorry, 12 and a half milliliters of hardener. So this needs to be 12.5. Okay, so to make it easy on me when I'm mixing, I'm just going to use a cup and some water, and I'm going to make me a copy of what I need to do. So I'm just going to fill this up with 200 milliliters. Of water. All right. 
So that's my color. And so what I'm going to do is put a mark on the side of the cup. So when I do my cup, I'm going to add that much color. So there's the C for color. Now I want to do a hundred milliliters of reducer. We'll put it to there, and so then I'm going to make a line on my cup where that is, and that's going to be the R for a reducer. So the hardener is only going to be 12 and a half milliliters. So what I'm going to do is just measure that out right there is 10 milliliters, and so I'll just go a little bit higher, and then we'll pour that in there. So can't forget our little cup, but that gives me an indication of what I need to match up. So now all I got to do is fill up my cup to this for the color and then add in that for the reducer and then dump in for the hardener and I should be good to go. So that's for the color coat. So this is color. Now for the clear, while I'm at it, I want to do the same thing. So the clear says it is a four to one, 200 milliliters of clear. Let's mark that. And then we're going to do 50 milliliters. So we should be able to get that. I may have to put two clears down because I want a lot of clear on it to get some depth, but that'll be one to start with. And then we can come back and refill, mix it up again, and we'll shoot two clears most likely. But the color coat should work good. So let's set this over here for the clear. So you notice I'm using these Chinette crystal clears. This kind of plastic resists the uh, reducer eating it. If you try it like a solo cup or something like that, it's going to eat right through it and all your paint's going to be in the floor. So you need to use something that's this hard kind of plastic like those uh, crystal cup disposable things or you could use glass. Glass works pretty good too, but you have to clean it out. All right, so we're ready to mix the paint. And what I'm going to do is, is have to mix it up and go ahead and, and get it all prepped up. I'll move the camera over to the paint booth but I won't have time to set the camera up once I mix it and then put it into the, the gun. And so all I'm going to do is take a cup and I'm going to copy the levels with the actual paint and the reducer and the hardener. Copy those levels and then I'm going to stir it up, put my screen in, put it in the gun, and then I got to get to painting. So I'm going to have everything prepped up and I'll move the camera over and away we'll go. So the mixing is easy. You just fill it all up and you just sit there and stir it. Let it sit for a minute, stir it again, and then put it in there and get ready to shoot. So we'll turn the camera off, switch over to the paint booth, and then you can see me spray.
All right, we gave it about 30 minutes, so we are pretty much done. And it looks really good. Looks like we got a good paint. I see a few marks. I mean, nothing that I'm gonna worry about. Uh, one thing right here, I'll zoom in on it. You can see where I didn't go fast enough with a gun, so I got some paint runs right there in my clear. We'll show how to get those repaired as soon as everything cures out for about two days. We'll let it harden up and then I'll cut those back out of that clear and then we'll give it a buff and we should be in pretty good shape.